Hello guys welcome back to our channel I was unable to upload videos for a period of time but now every sunday one video will be uploaded so please consider subscribe our channel and press the bell button for upcoming updates today's topic is supracondylar fractures of the humerus in children introduction Supracondylar fractures of the humerus are common in children due to the unique bony architecture of the supracondylar area. In this video, we will discuss the mechanism of injury, classification, clinical features, radiographic evaluation, management options, and potential complications associated with supracondylar fractures in children. 1. Mechanism of injury Supracondylar fractures result from a fall on outstretched hands with hyperextension at the elbow, accompanied by abduction or adduction and dorsiflexion of the hand. 2. Classification Supracondylar fractures are broadly classified into extension type and flexion type. Gartland's classification in children type 1 undisplaced, type 2 displaced with intact posterior cortex. Type 3 – Displaced, without intact posterior cortex, with possible posteromedial or posterolateral displacement of the distal fragment. 3. Clinical features – Patients with supracondylar fractures may experience pain, swelling, and an obvious S-shaped deformity of the upper arm. Loss of both active and passive range of motion of elbow is observed. Vascular and nerve injuries may be present, leading to symptoms such as pseudoparalysis. Tests should be conducted to assess the brachial artery and the three nerves of the upper limb, radial, median, and ulnar. 4. Radiographic evaluation X ray of the elbow, including AP and lateral views, is crucial for assessing fracture anatomy and the adequacy of reduction. Important radiological parameters, Bowman's angle, compares the affected side with the unaffected side, measures the angle between the horizontal line of the elbow and a line drawn through the lateral epiphysis and the long axis of the arm. Angle between the long axis of the humerus and the transverse axis of the elbow. Indicates cubitus varus, less than 90 degrees, or cubitus valgus, greater than 90 degrees. Various signs, such as the tear drop sign, anterior humeral line, coronoid line, fat pad sign, fishtail sign, and crescent sign. Help evaluate the fracture's characteristics. 5. Management Conservative management attempt closed reduction under general anesthesia followed by immobilization in hyperflexion and forearm pronation. Surgical options, closed reduction and percutaneous internal fixation. PCIF percutaneous fixation with K wires after closed reduction is suitable for grossly unstable fractures or cases with gross swelling. Open reduction and internal fixation. ORIF rarely indicated, usually. For special indications as determined by the flowchart, 6. Complications Functional impairment complications Neurological involvement Complications Functional impairment complications Neurological involvement Radial, median, anterior interosseous and ulnar nerve injuries. Vascular injury, direct injury to the brachial artery by the fracture or other causes, loss of mobility, mechanical blockage of flexion due to posterior displacement, myositis ossificans, rare condition seen with manipulative closed reduction or open reduction. Conclusion Supracondylar fractures of the humerus are common in children and require careful evaluation, management, and monitoring for potential complications. Early diagnosis, appropriate classification, and timely intervention are essential for achieving optimal outcomes in these fractures.